Hello YouTube, today I'll be investigating uh, water electrolysis using a pulse system like a jewel thief. Basically combined uh, a jewel, jewel thief with the water electrolysis setup. So um, we have a, a torus, uh, first layer is bifiller 23 gauge and 26 gauge and third layer is um, 23 gauge, three, three layers. So the, the third layer uh, has more, more um, wines. And um, so it's basically the same setup that you've seen earlier in many videos that I, that I make. So the, um, the uh, final layer I have collect connected to a bridge rectifier. These, uh, um, so bridge rectifier and then it goes into our water bath. And across the water bath we have a capacitor. So this water here is fresh water, it's, there's no salt in it, and um, as you can see we have some electrolysis going. I don't know if you can see the bubbles, but um, I, I, you can hear the system running right now, it makes a, a, a high pitched noise. Notice what happens when we lift this thing off, see, see the noise changes. So this... Um, the capacit the, the capacitance in the cell changes when we lift when we lift up the the cell so less of the metal is uh, contacting the water so so it's it's very important what kind of capacitor you use in your um, post electrolysis system and we have many inventors in the past who uh, managed to do a more efficient form of electrolysis I wrote them down for you. So we have, of course, Stan Myers. He did his um, water-powered vehicle in 1986, and we have John Kenzie's 2007, Genepex Company, and uh, and others. And I'm I'm going to post links to the to these guys um, and uh, news news stories about them, so you can watch uh, news news uh, stories about these guys um, for yourself. So, as you can see, it's uh, using water. For power has been done many times in the past. Water's hydrogen and oxygen, both of them are flammable gases. So the trick is is just getting electrolysis to work efficiently. And um, exactly how? I mean, this is just a preliminary testing. But as you can see, you can you can get your um, cell um, to work as a capacitor. And that's what why I think Stan Myers and many of these other um, companies and inventors used fresh water. The only the only person that didn't use fresh water is John Kenzius. He used uh, salt water. But um, Stan Myers used, of course, uh, fresh water, and he used um, stainless steel plates. And I think uh, why he did that is um, uh, stainless steel doesn't corrode when you run electrolysis uh, through it. And um, if it if the cell was to corrode, it would actually change the capacitance. So he used his water cell as a capacitor. So if you have other uh, sol solids floating in the solution, it's going to change the capacitance. So you have to have a different uh, re resonant frequency for it. And how do you find the frequency? Just whatever makes the most bubbles. Here I'm adjusting the frequency with this uh, with a potentiometer. See the the pitch changes and we're running at 20, 21 volts but the input power is um, my standard 5.9 volts at 400 milliamps Nokia power supply so I had this old mold that I used before for my electric experiments with two aluminum plates and I decided to run this experiment using aluminum plates and a bigger capacitor and you will see how aluminum is going to affect the solution. You'll um, you'll end up with gunk um, float floating about in your solution, and it's going to uh, affect the capacitance of, of your capacitor. Let's see if we can get some burn over there. So we do have some hydrogen forming. Hopefully, you can see the little bubbles. So the capacitor that I'm using is this big boy over here. It's um, 250 volts, 500 microfarad capacitor, and um, you get a lot less bubbles if you um, get rid of the capacitor. 
so that's what I no noticed. As you can see, we are getting bubbles. So everything is the same as before, uh, the same power supply. Uh, I'm going to provide the schematic if, if you guys are interested. So, it's my beginning of my dive into electrolysis. Of course, using water for power is ideal because it's cheap. You can um, you don't have to dig it out of the ground, and um, it burns really clean with hydrogen and oxygen. It's actually doing pretty well. As you can see, the gunk is really starting to form in in the um, in the middle. I don't know if you can if you can see it. But that's, that's going to affect the capacitance yeah, in between the plates. So at the end of this video I decided to run electrolysis using a conventional way. So I got rid of my transistor and I got rid of my toroid. And so all I have is the Nokia phone charger um, hooked up to the plates. And as, as you can see it's not doing very much because we're, not, we're only dealing with... Um, you know 5.9 volts at 400 milliamps so you can't even see any bubbles really forming any of the plates the distance is too large over there so as you, as you can see pulsing your voltage and your and your amperage creates a big difference so you can see nothing is really going on there so I'm going to run regular electrolysis using a smaller distance. So hopefully we'll get to see some bubbles. So we can compare uh, what we see now to what we saw previously. So this is another example of conventional electrolysis. We have two stainless steel plates with um, porous rubber in between. And um, again the same voltage from before. So regular no, non-post voltage. As you can see, it's 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 pretty underwhelming in terms of um, how many bubbles we're seeing compared to before. We're getting a lot more bubbles with the pulse system. So I'm just I'm just showing you guys the difference between regular and pulse systems bubble production. Well you guys, that's pretty much it. I hope this video has piqued your interest in pulse electrolysis systems. Uh, I'm going to post um, a link to these new stories with, with these individuals and um, the only company on this list that is currently has something available for the public is GGS Technologies and I'll post a link to their website. So. Um, if you guys have any comments, please leave them in the section below. And these links will be provided in the description box and at the end of the video. Cheers, you guys.